All righty. Uh, yesterday afternoon it was Carlton and North Melbourne. And, Damo, I, I, as much as it's painful to say, I mm. think the focus was on one man at the end of this. Yeah, it is. It's on the coach, David Teague. And, and given now this review was called five weeks ago, and this is the, the worst result for David Teague within those five weeks, it's also the worst result... The season. Now, they were obviously um, offset initially by Harry Mackay coming out of the game. It didn't help their cause at all. But to be beaten by the, the team that still sits after round 19 on the bottom of the ladder, it, it's, it's not a good result. So those five matches, TJ, wins against Adelaide, Frio and Collingwood. That was last week. Losses to Geelong and now North Melbourne. Mm. And uh, David Teague last uh, night, Bill, after the game, spoke and described it as such, the, the worst performance of 2021. Is it fair to say that was your worst performance of the year? Uh, I think that's absolutely fair, yep. Over the longer journey and where we're going, I have absolute belief in the group. I have belief in the, the, the people we have at our footy club that will take us forward. So um, if the question is, do I have belief? Absolutely. And, and I'll keep saying it. We're, we've got some work to do. We're not good enough yet, clearly. And that's why we're not playing finals. But going forward, this group will play finals. I'm very confident of that. No, they were very, very ordinary yesterday. They had plenty to play for. Mm. They had Ed Kerno's 200th game. Yep. They had uh, a must-win to stay or play in the finals. And then, of course, playing North Melbourne, bottom of the ladder. Mm. They were poor, Nath. Can't just use Mackay as an excuse because, yes, he's kicked the most goals this year, but good clubs, and it wasn't their forwards that lost it for them yesterday. Good clubs. Port Adelaide a couple of weeks ago played against St Kilda. They had three big-name players out. They got the job done, so... Good clubs get the job done yeah. no matter what they have in there and that's all about their game plan. Mm. With, with four matches remaining now, it, it is on a knife's edge for, for David T. Given, given they launched into this really full-scale review and, mm. and to produce that type of performance against the bottom team at this stage, it's not uh, ideal for The them. ruse were good. Very good. Yeah, and we're going to talk about them in detail a little later on. Um, well, but even uh, now. Just, be, just before we get to Lordo, uh, Lordo did mention this morning that he'd heard on AFL's media platform there with Kane Corns and Mitch Cleary. Uh, Kane, you were quite scathing when it came to your assessment about David Teague and, and the players. Yeah, more so the, the players look to me like they've given up on the coach and, and we can show a, a million examples of that and we'll get to that in a moment and Lordy's going to take a look at it as will I. But during that third quarter, uh, they gave up on the coach. Now, the demise is coming for David Teague. I think we can all been around footy long enough to know which way this is going. Now, whether that's this week, in a month, in 12 months' time, he's not going to be the long-term option as Carlton coach because he hasn't bought into the defensive aspects of the game and a defensive coach could come in and instantly, through the course of a pre-season, make Carlton a four-goal better side. And unfortunately, um, that will be the end of David Teague, the fact that he hasn't got this team to be able to bind to the defensive aspects of the game. Just on you, that point you made, Brownie, at least Port Adelaide had Charlie Dixon. I don't think Carlton had anyone at all in their forward line. So Patrick Cripps had to be full forward. So I think it was one of the worst forward lines. Not to, So this was an issue for David T right from the start in the game. But one excuse you can't give is for defensive pressure. So if you were David T, you'd say our forward line's not great. We have to defend for our lives to try and manufacture scores. And the third quarter was damning. It was 7-2 to 4 points north's way. But I just wanted to show these defensive efforts and what will hurt David T at a review. So this was Jaden Stevenson out on the wing there. No one on him, no care for him, and you pay the price while they were one point up at that point in time. This is the next one. You watch uh, Jaden Stevenson here. Uh, Patrick Cripps needed to nail that tackle. He doesn't. So when you don't want to apply pressure at the source, this is what happens. And this was happening time and time again. We look at the time. Yeah. That doesn't happen against good sides where someone can do this. Watch him. Dances around once, dances around another and kicks the goal. And this is where I also talk about Petrevsky seaton and where his career's at. So he's got Taron Thomas in the perfect spot. He's got him goal side. But watch what transpires here and the lack of care to defend for your club. So look how much time Jed Anson takes. In that time, he doesn't care. What's Petrevsky seaton His man just gets a nice, easy handball into an open goal. So that was alarming for me, what I saw. Yes, you had no forwards, but there's no excuse for that. Yeah, so that, that's that's going to be the vision that will hurt David Teague. We could have shown a million examples of that. That is coach-killing vision right there, as is this. Now, you wonder why Nick Larkey kicks seven goals. It's because not one Carlton defender put a glove on him. Have a look at this. This is in the forward line. This is a player who kicks seven for the game. you got Plowman, you got Wiedering. Do not touch 
the forward who is the most threatening one for the opposition. That's one example of that. We're going to see another one here. Lockie Plowman, how he continues to be selected in this side amazes me. Where is he going, Lockie Plowman, there? Who's he guarding? There's no contact. There's no body work. There's no bumper bar. Yes, you're outsized, but you wonder why Nick Larkey kicks seven and, and well done to him. We'll get to that and we'll get to all the positives Good. for North. That's why. Yeah, well, one of those positives, Jaden Stevenson will be joining us live. And uh, it is funny, isn't it, North Melbourne on bottom of the ladder? But if you're a North Melbourne supporter, you'd be feeling pretty excited about uh, what's... Uh, what, yeah, absolutely. What's Four and a half wins, Tony. Mm. This was uh, Liam Stocker uh, yesterday. Have a look at this here for a brief moment there. We're just wondering what it was. Oh, he's got lovely jocks. Where are they there? <laughs> we just got a zero in there. Look at that. How good are they? Not a nice tattoo, but they're lovely. Or is that just a tattoo, maybe? <laughs> what is that? Because Some paint is paint. that the rainbow uh, jocks or what? No, I think huh? it's just a designer. Just Not a bad. designer pair of jocks. Oh, they might be speedos or something. Might get an extra, extra, extra large pair of them for old <laughs> Anthony William. <laughs> what are you going to use for your other butt cheek? <laughs>